Oh my, how could I have forgotten? Let me fix that for you, Tarzman. How's everybody doing? I uh, hope you guys are having a lovely Wednesday afternoon. I don't know. Whenever the heck it's this afternoon, evening for Allison. I don't know. Let's hang out. Let's make some cool stuff. Um, we were hoping to, um, you know, have a part to design, and I was waiting on sizes, but it didn't work. I didn't get them in time. So. Maybe if I get those in an email while we're doing our thing, I can switch, but otherwise, we are going to be making parts for 
this camera. I will explain about this in just one second, but yes, the ever effervescent Victoria has graced us with her presence today, and she's currently taking a bath. I wish I could do like a Gaussian blur to blur her out like we did in that last video. All right, let's get down to business. Um, so, some of you all will remember this part from a recent video that we did, because, uh, you know, I decided, what the hell, let's just design something and show off how CAD can work and have zero plan going into it. So I ended up with some monstrosity and something that I, all I did was actually just extrude and that was it. So, gotta love when those kind of things happen. But, uh, yeah, this was from that last video, uh, that we did on the, on the main channel. Um, let's see, we, what video we put out the, uh, oh, the Slicer video went out today. Awesome. That's, that was a fun video. Uh, I gotta give it out to B last. He helped us, uh, get our notes ready and everything the way it should have been for that video. So if it wasn't for you, B last, it wouldn't have been possible. But we don't care about that. What we care about is a brand new design. Let's talk about the camera for a minute, and then we'll get into what we're going to make for it. This is the DJI Osmo Pocket, and normally, that's all that it is. Okay. Uh, Alright, I'll call you Brad. The DJI Osmo Pocket is a DJI Mavic camera that's handheld, so when you turn it on, it is actually a, uh, here I'll flip it around, actually just flip it around this way so you guys can see it, it is a gimbal stabilized camera. And so what I can do is I can lock on to certain things and let's say I want to lock on to the camera up there and as I move it, you see how the gimbal tracks as well? It's going to track the camera. I guess you can't see it when I go down. But you can see it. See how that arm is constantly tracking? The, the camera here is constantly tracking the camera that we use to film. Okay. And the value for that is one, my crippled ass, this will keep me from making, you know, bouncy video. And we are going to be 3D printing a fourth axis stabilizer for it, so it'll be really smooth. But two, because this camera has a powered three axis gimbal. It is, it enables us to do really, really smooth time lapses where we can set the camera to move throughout a time lapse of maybe a set building. Maybe that's happening soon. I gotta turn down my audio. It is way too loud in my ear. It does not appear that when I lower my audio that it gets any lower for you guys. So, good enough for me. But yes, this camera is awesome. There's a DJI Osmo Pocket. Um, I'm gonna link to it in the chat for you guys so you guys have one uh, so you can see what they are real quick. Yes, Victoria, what can I do for you, my sweetheart? So this is a Gen 1. Uh, I have a Gen 1. Yes, what? Ow! Bites me. Thanks. Ow. Can you not? Can, can we can we not bite me please? Thank you. Hey, excuse me, ma'am. I am trying to work here. All right. One of us needs to pay the bills so you can eat. Okay. Jeez. Speaking of paying the bills, make sure you like this video. <laughs> Subscribe if you aren't. And uh, yeah, we're gonna make some cool parts for this camera. There is a pretty decent um, community out there for these because they're incredibly cheap. I paid no more than $175 for these things used. If you want them brand new, they're like 200 bucks. The brand new one is 350. And if you go on to Thingiverse or Prusa printers, and I'll bring Prusa printers up because we like Prusa. Um, we will be able to see, let me get rid of Big Grant. We bring up Prusa printers. By the way, they're doing timepieces as their uh, latest challenge, and I'm really excited for that. So, yeah. Anyways, let's look up the Osmo. Osmo spelled just like that, and you can see there are some, you know, a couple 
But the thing specifically that I want to do, I have not been able to find. And maybe it's because I'm a moron and can't find it. But that's okay, because I can just make it myself. <laughs> um, an issue that I have with the Osmo Pocket is you would think for a camera of this size that it would have a quarter 20 mount, and it friggin' doesn't. I'm gonna bring up Big Grant so you guys can see. There is no way to mount this thing to a damn tripod. And uh, <laughs> Heather says, I'm a moron too. Same. Welcome to the club. Morons unite to take over the world. Um, there's no way to mount this stupid thing to a tripod. Now, they make an adapter that can hold it to a GoPro mount, but it holds it kind of in the middle. I should have brought the piece over, but I didn't. Um, I want to hold it from the bottom because the fact that it can rotate almost 360 degrees is incredibly valuable. So you can set it up in the middle of a room that you're working on and have it pan across multiple times during a hyperlapse or a time lapse. So I'm like, yeah, I can do this better. So we actually don't even need the camera. This is the wireless base for it, by the way. This thing is so tiny, it doesn't have Wi-Fi built in. You need this dumb little base that makes it so much bigger. And DJI claims that it was for reasons. Well, I think those reasons suck. And I'm here to say, you know what? Have 3D printer, will reverse engineer. So we're gonna be utilizing this wireless base. The camera is still awesome. Like, th th this thing is, it, it, it is, it's like one of those toys that I said, I'm gonna buy it and then find a good use for it. Cause like you can control the gimbal from an off camera uh, little joystick. And then the gimbal just kind of moves the way you would expect a gimbal to move. So I can lock it on something. I don't know. I find it amazing that they can pack so much technology into this little thing and no, it's not sponsored. Uh, I guess we do make a small cut if you buy with the affiliate links that we post in chat. But this is the wireless base that I'm talking about. Um, it's just got USB-C in and it has a USB-C out, which is something that we need to take into account because this does allow pass-through charging as well as pass-through audio. So DJI makes their own proprietary connector that comes into here and comes out to a microphone. I have not been able to test yet because I don't have the piece that I need if a generic one works or not. But we have wireless microphones right now, so I don't really care. And for time lapses, there's no audio in it anyways. So for my purposes for this camera for the next week or so, totally don't care um, about the audio. And uh, I actually just got my big shipment in from the YouTube channel Press Reset. Go over and take a look at his channel if you want. Um, give him a subscribe if you think that they've earned it. Uh, but we bought a bunch of their old equipment as they were moving from Seattle to New York. And uh, we're going to do an unboxing of that once I get the new set kind of set up. We won't have all the lighting in there perfect. Um, but you guys will see, we just got community unlocked. Um, so this weekend's going to be a lot of community posts. So make sure you guys check out YouTube throughout the weekend. We're going to be throwing up some community posts about some of the stuff we're going to be doing because we want your help in building these sets. We know what the wall is going to look like for the most part. We know we want to put some shelves on it, but we don't know where. And I would love your kind of assistance, opinion, and thoughts on it because... Well, if I had it my way, all the shelves would be even. They would all be perfectly spaced from each other, and they would be lit with 5,700 Kelvin lights, as intended. But instead, I bought over $100 of uh, addressable RGB LEDs. It's uh, about $200 stuff from Ikea, because it's Ikea. How can you not go there and spend less than $200? And uh, we're just going to make some cool stuff. Uh, it's going to be a whole thing as we convert my garage into not one but at least two sets. It was going to be three, but unfortunately, the table that we were going to use for the third set, it's been a table for our CNC machine. Some termites uh, got a hold of it, and uh, the entire back half of the table is destroyed. It was a custom-built table that I built for our CNC. It was designed to hold 2,000 pounds, and now it can barely hold itself up. So we might do a whole video on that woodworking project, but to do that, I got to have a repaired back. So that's that one's going to have to go kind of on the sideline until we get the back taken care of. Also, can we get a like for this adorable little kitty cat down here? Just, I mean, so tired. Just so friggin' tired. Look at her. Aren't you? You're so tired. And the internet loves you, even though you're kind of a jerk to me sometimes. Look at her. 
Look at her. Literally biting me. Right now. I mean, I can't. I just... Nothing. Cat gives me literally no love. Just hates me constantly. No. no. Victoria loves me. And I love her just the same. I gotta get the camera in the right spot. Good enough. We're gonna go with that. And wood does need to be cheaper. That's true. All this talk about the table and now it's eight up. Did I discuss that particular table? It was built to handle like 4,000 pounds. It was a custom design. It's how we build fish tank stands. Uh, my brother's big into fish tanks. And uh, we build all of our own custom fish tank stands. Because, well, ones from the store suck. And when you build them yourself, you have massive flexibility. I designed them in CAD. Then we go and cut them and we realize our designs were terrible from the beginning. And we just kind of randomly do it. I have talked about the butcher block table that we're going to be using, but that one I bought brand new about two weeks ago, and the termites are no longer a problem. They have been eradicated. It was just old remnants of termites, so it's Florida. It's just kind of a thing. Um, these are dry wood, thankfully, so no, they're subterranean. The dry wood are the bad ones. Subterranean are the ones that are not as bad. They're... Anyways, let's get to designing. All right, we're in fusion. Uh, as always, we're gonna start. This piece is gonna be better from the top because um, I'm gonna extrude straight up. And what we're gonna do is we're going to create a piece that this can slide into, okay? So it's going to have to grab it down at the bottom and then reasonably follow this contour. So as it goes in, it can really only go in one way. And then we will be able to screw it into a quarter 20 thread mount. Quarter 20, that's quarter inch, 20 threads per inch. Quarter 20, there you go. Um, we're going to try out two different methods for this. I'm going to actually create threads in this part. But I don't know if that's how we're going to end up doing it. Because, of course, plastic threads are nowhere near as strong as metal threads. So we may end up going to a heat set threaded insert. But that'll be a channel video uh, if and when that does happen. So let's start with it. Let's grab our sketch. Let's scroll to the top. Let's do that. I need to measure the diameter. By the way, I thought the cat hid the cover for my calipers. And it is a standard tripod mount, as Tarzman said. I thought the cat hid the cover to my calipers, because on these cheap calipers, you always take the batteries out of them. <laughs> Where the termites helped me realize that I need the forest system. If I could afford it, good lord, it's expensive. Um, but yes, on these cheap calipers, they draw a bunch of power even when they're turned off. So make sure to take the batteries out of them. We are going to be doing a print coming up to show about that. We have a video coming up all about uh, tools that we use. I've got it all scripted for the most part. We know the tools we're going to show in it. But I want to do it on the new top-down table set that we're going to be building. Because I think that video is going to do better in that particular environment. So, anyways, let's get our diameter. We're going to measure it. So... We talked about draft in that last video. You guys can see the draft on that. You see the angle? That's draft. And so when you want to measure something with a draft on it, you got to get all the way to that outer edge. I'm reading 39.5. We're going to call it 39.5. I'm going to up it to 39.75 to give us just a little bit of room. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make the walls relatively thin and add a little detent. But so let's go ahead and get our design on there. 39.75. That is the base. So this is the base of our unit. We want to have it be a little bit bigger than that. So to do that, we hit O for offset. Um, let me turn on. So I've got my, my 3D connection space pilot, but I never use its uh, keys because of as I'm filming these videos for you guys, I want to make sure that I do it with things that you all will understand. Cat, nobody can see you. You are gorgeous. You are beautiful, but nobody can see you. Also, I put stickers on my water bottle. And if you want to get some stickers, keep an eye out. We're going to be launching a Patreon here pretty soon where you can have a tier where we'll send you stickers, which do include the most regarded Victoria in the, in the hat stickers, which will be fun. Hydration is important. All right. So we want to make sure that our offset... I'm thinking maybe... You know, I've got that part for Kenzie. The part that we did last week for Kenzie, this crazy green part, it ended up... Actually, this was not one of the parts we did last week. This was printed later on, used in time-lapse. Um, this was actually pretty flexible. And I think we went like 2.5 millimeters. 
So I'm going to go 2.5 millimeters on that. Gives us a good base there. Um, and so I want to add some lines. But to do that, we need to first do the lines that we always want, which is L and X, our construction lines, to come up. Get it way out of the way. Hit escape. Hit the L key again. Go out to there randomly. Hit X. Hit escape. And that way you are no longer in your construction. Um, we want to create something so it slides and clips in. Now, there are a few different ways we can do it, uh, but uh, the way I'm thinking, I want to do a line from there, I don't know, man, maybe there, and we're going to end up mirroring it, so let's look at, uh, let's look at doing some, uh, some lines here, so I want this to be at, no, Grant, dang it. Uh, a dimension grabbed where I didn't want it to grab and I couldn't grab it. Anyways, let's grab a dimension. We're going to grab that to the center point there because we want to know... Are you not going to give me an angle? Seriously? Alright, fine. We'll do it from here to this top. Okay, so at 90 degrees, that would be a, that would be a perfect half moon, but we want to go a little bit further. That way, it'll lock in when we put it inside. We don't want to go too much, okay? So if we go to 90, we can see... That's weird. Why would it be there? Let me see something. Let me... I want to check something. This is not what I was expecting. I'm going to make this collinear with this. And if we do a dimension from here to here... Yeah, that is also 90. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to now remove the collinear constraint. That kind of gets it at the right angle that I was looking for. But we're going to take this and let's go to like, hello, are you going to let me? All right, let me finish the sketch. Come back into the sketch. You going to let me change that? Oh, no, it won't because it thinks that it is over constrained. So we got to redo that constraint. That is 90. I want to make it 70. And that's going to really force you to push it in. That might actually be a little bit too much. Let's do 75. That should be good. That should be a C that really grabs it in. And uh, on this side here, we're going to do a couple of lines. So let me grab my line tool. I'm going to come straight down. That should be okay. Now we're going to grab our mirror tool. We're going to mirror these two over. Grant, you're really not following your own damn rules. All right. So let's make that... 2.5. We'll do everything a factor of 2.5. This probably needs to know how far it is. No. What do you need to know? It's trying to know something. Here to here. Nope. Alright, whatever. It's going to stay blue. I don't really care. We're going to go with a mirror here and here. Mirror line is that. We're going to click OK. And the reason we're doing this is I want to create a small... Um, oh, what's the right way to describe this? A, um, a, a little nib so that when you slide everything in, it kind of locks in place on the back side as well. So you have to bend it out and then you can slide it. Which might mean that this might be too much. It's CAD. It's easy to fix, Grant. Deal with it later. Alright, let's first get ourselves a good looking base here. Because as Megan Trainer says, we are all about that base. And that song really does upset me because it does not use a standing base. And it does not have a good baseline. I digress. I, I'm not going to talk about why I hate pop culture music. Um, I'll just do everything with a factor of 2.5. Actually... I don't know if we want to do that. So I'm going to, we have to design it for the fact that we're going to have a, uh, a heat set threaded insert in there. So I'm going to show you guys what they are. I'm going to put it in the chat just so you can see it. So that's the uh, quarter 20 threaded insert. Uh, and I'm going to bring it up on screen as well so you can see what it is. So these are those inserts. Now those inserts are six millimeters in diameter. 
and uh, eight millimeters in length. Is that true? Something tells me that's not true. Outer diameter is eight millimeters, so that's what I care about. It's okay, six millimeters tall, eight millimeters OD. Grant, you should read. All right, so I'm gonna add that into my notes that these are um, six millimeters tall, eight millimeters OD. Now here's the deal. Threaded inserts can be a real pain in the ass, but that does mean that this needs to be at least six millimeters deep and likely should be probably eight and a half. So, oops, Grant went the wrong way. Minus 8.5. Gonna bring that sketch back because that sketch matters, but we should I Gotta go back into the sketch and make a few other changes. So let's do a circle. We're gonna do this to 0.25 inches And we're going to do another circle To just under eight millimeters. So like 7.5 millimeters uh, that one's gonna be fun. All right, so we're gonna finish the sketch. Um, we are going to also do not a press pull. We're gonna do E for extrude. Where'd you go? Right, you're over here, you dingus. This is the hole that we're gonna be using, but I want it to be an offset plane. We're gonna offset it by 8.5 millimeters, and it's gonna be negative 8.5, and we're gonna have it go in. Uh, probably positive 6.25. Give you a little bit of extra just in case. Okay. And we're going to immediately thread this so that I don't forget. But, here's the problem with fusion in a lot of programs. Chamfer your hole first. When you're dealing with threads, you want your threads to be chamfered. Chamfering threads matters a lot. So we're going to chamfer this like a millimeter. Something relatively large. Um, and that should work. Now... When we do our threaded insert, we will pro if we end up having to do the threaded insert, we're probably going to have to drill this out completely. Kind of is what it is, unfortunately. You got to work with what you got. So, we're going to grab that. It is a... Uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. I believe this is an Acme screw thread. Uh, nope. Let's go for... Nope, Great British Pipe Threads, ISO Pipe Threads. Nope. Inch tapping. Doesn't want inch tapping. Interesting. I have no clue where to go, but I'm going to go with... Uh, I got to figure out how to do quarter 20 in Fusion. Give me one second. All right, so let's see what we gotta do. Um, alternatively, I can just cheat and pull in a quarter 20 bolt, which I think is what I'm gonna end up doing. All right, we're gonna cheat since that first thing didn't give me the answer I was looking for and I'm not finding, you gonna go back, go back to, to Google. So, we could do all this, but I'm just going to cheat. We're going to go to McMaster. Why has McDonald's come up? I don't eat. McDonald's is disgusting. Um, so let's do uh, quarter 20. Right. This was a part that we did for a client. Grant. Oh my gosh. Quarter 20. I don't care what they are. I just need a quarter 20 something. That is correct. I can use a heat seared brass threaded insert to add RC workbench, and that is actually the plan. If the printed threads don't last, which I don't expect them to, but this was supposed to be a way for me to show you how to do threads in fusion. But my idiot brain does not know where the hell I'm supposed to which one of these they're supposed to be. And I'm concerned it's gonna take me longer than I care to actually figure this out. So like I look inside of this, and this is all metric. Um, like Acme screw threads designation, it's only giving me inch by 25. 
class is 4G, direction is right hand. Maybe this is quarter 20. I don't know. If it's not quarter 20, <laughs> it's going to be. That shrunk way down. Interesting. All right, let me let me scroll back. Um, I'm gonna redo these threads because it looks like they're not. It's not taking with a chamfer, and that's my concern here. Oh, all good, all good. Quarter pounder, yes, sir. That's back in the day when I used to eat that crap. Yeah, see, it doesn't look right. It should be an Acme screw thread. So I don't know why I'm only getting... Oh, hey! Found it! Yes! Ah! Golly! It's under ANSI Unified Screw Threads. I'm going to push this out here. That did not get mad at me? No kidding. I'm going to move that there. That's not going to work. So, yeah... Not amazing, but that should be quarter 20. Um, let me look at opening up this hole a little bit from 6.35. Let's go to 7 and see what it looks like now. Because when Fusion does threads, it should just accommodate stuff. Radius 2.558. That's only 4 millimeters. I don't know. It's probably going to work. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. But what I have learned, especially, is make sure you offset all of your faces when you're doing this kind of thing. Because you are going to mess up, and your printer is not going to be perfect. So I'm going to offset it by uh, probably negative 0.1. And if I'm right, that should expand the threads a little bit. Yes. Okay. Okay. And that's good. That gives me a little bit of wiggle room. Actually, yeah. I'm going to give myself more wiggle room than I need. Because it's going to end up screwing down flat to this plate. So, I just don't care. Let's see. Uh, let me make sure my team hasn't yelled at me for things. Nope. Nobody's yelled at me for things yet. So, that's a plus. All right, so we got our bottom threaded hole, and yes, we could do heat set and threaded inserts, but thankfully, because I'm not a complete and utter moron, I was able to find this. That's a joke, because I am a complete and utter moron, and I missed it for a little bit there. Uh, either way, I'm pretty happy with that. That's going to get the job done for us. Now we're going to go ahead and do our second extrude, E for extrude. We're going to bring this up. Okay. Now, if we look at the base plate for the Osmo Pocket, it is 22.6 high, and then the Osmo fits directly into it. So, again, I guess since Dad's RC Workbench joined a little bit late, I will just, uh, I will just show him with Big Grant so he can see it. This is the camera that we're designing parts for, and it's got a base on it. And the base does not have a freaking tripod mount on it. And we're gonna fix that! We don't need the camera. It's a DJI Osmo, uh, pocket. So it's a Mavic camera, fully gimbal stabilized, um, camera. So, anyways, turning that off, putting it away, because I will dick around with it for the entire time. Okay. So, now you know that. Let's go back to doing our base. Our base is 23 high, but it does taper. We're going to handle our taper uh, with draft. Taper can be complicated if you don't have a taper gauge, which I definitely do not have. So we're going to play the hard game, which is guess and check, because that's really the only game that we can play. We're not going to taper it because taper is going to taper both edges and I only want to taper one edge. So we're just going to go ahead and hit join. We're going to use the draft function, which I believe should work. Uh, we want to pull it in this direction and we want to taper that wall. And 
And actually, I want to do a different direction. I want it to pull in this direction. So as, yep, as we add taper like that, we should be fine. So I need, so I have the bottom measurement, which again, for those that are just joining us, is 39.5, give or take. I got to write that down because I'm going to forget. That's Hangouts. That's not what I want it to be in. Uh, 39.5 bottom i could add it over here into the comments um but i know i'm going to forget to look at them but it would probably be better practice if i did and i know that my face cuts most of it out anyways so we'll leave it this way for now uh 39.5 bottom and then it necks down to at the top the top goes down to geez that's tough come on grab the edge 32.5 is the top. So 32.5 for the top. Um, so that means that we have to figure out what degree of draft it is. And that might be really freaking tough. That's okay. We're willing to learn. You know, they did a loft. They didn't do a draft this way. So if we look, it goes from circular to not circular. I'm assuming they did a loft. But I want to see if, if this way will work. So we can do that. It's just going to give us a, a, an angle. And I can check here and see my radius is 17, which means my diameter is more than 32. So we're going to go to like 6 degrees. Boy, that is a fair bit of angle. But let's see what that looks like now. 32, that gives me 33. Half a millimeter? I might think that's going to be enough. Let me go to 6.5 and see what happens. 16.2. I think that's it. But you know what, Grant? Take it back to like 6.25. Give yourself a little bit of wiggle room. Now, why is that more? Oh, right, 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 Grant, you're an idiot. You want it to be more. Um, that way the diameter is slightly larger than you want it to be. That way everything should slide in and be good. Now, because this is not something that operates through the entire process, if you look here, um, it does kind of cut into the circle. We have to do that same basic thing. So I'm going to turn this into a rectangle on that initial sketch, and we're going to burn it straight up and through. That way everything should kind of reasonably move into place um this may not work and if it doesn't work i'm just gonna get rid of the tapered sidewalls and it's just gonna hold it from the bottom it should be enough with the little detent that i want to add in so um let me go back to the original sketch and let's work on the width so the width should be pretty simple it does taper but i don't think that's gonna be too much of an issue for us and all i'm doing is i'm just taking a measurement of the width all the way at the top here I'm reading 24 on the money, so I'm going to do a center rectangle because this is centered. At least to my knowledge, it's centered, so I'm going to do a rectangle and a center rectangle. And so we know that the uh, the vertical, this is 24, and the width is that 32.5. Uh, 32.5. Interesting. It goes outside of their main field. Hmm. Now, I'm going to go out to 30, 32. I'm going to give it an extra quarter millimeter. 32.75 by uh, 24.25. Give us a little bit of extra space there. We're going to finish that sketch. And theoretically, all I have to do is come here and extrude this and this all the way up and through oh all right i guess i'll also extrude that and that should get it to push all the way in and lock on that back edge um theoretically right no no it won't okay that draft is a really bad idea yeah, the draft will only work. 
What? All right, the draft will only work in certain areas. So the draft will only actually work there, right? That's that's the only places that draft actually works. Let me grab that triangle thing there. I'm trying to wrap my head around this because clearly I don't have something right here. This is probably why these accessories don't exist for this. Because this is a very difficult thing to design. Because it is all drafted, all fillets, all little tiny parts. That's a frustrating one. Um, hmm. Let me know in the comments, guys. Do you have any uh, any ideas of what we should be doing here? Because I'm kind of stumped. Because this entire draft isn't going to work. Because of this box. That box is this. So I think I actually have to do a loft at the right height. So let's try that. It's 22.5 22 tall. I'll do 22.75 tall. All right, I'm gonna roll back a little bit. I'm gonna roll back before the draft as well. I'm going to do an offset plane from here. Um, at 22.75 from the top, which puts me right where I should be. I'm gonna create a new sketch here. I feel like I should try to model their their piece first, and then look at building a mount for it. So I think that's maybe what I'm gonna try to do first. Yeah, let's do that first. I feel like I just wasted 40 minutes, but welcome to welcome to the world of CAD modeling. Nothing is the way you think it should be. Grab me all of my reference measurements, all of that stuff. Cause I think that's all I'm gonna need further up. Yeah, it should be all that I need further up. Bring the body back in, but honestly that body's just gonna cause us problems. Um, so we're gonna take some basic measurements and actually build this piece the way that they would have built it. Okay, so we're about 8.3 millimeters up from the bottom here. Yeah, design error. Another way to know how not to do something at all. I thought I had a good plan in my head, but I mean, sometimes it doesn't work, right? Sometimes your your ideas does, don't work. Why is that not going to work? Oh, because I turned off all the bodies. Right. Okay, so then... Then it looks like it's lofting. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to loft. Not revolve. I'm going to loft. Between this profile... And, uh... Dang. It's not... Okay, it's going to let me do it this way. Oh, boy. Oh, it's so mad. It's all self-intersecting. Okay, there we go. That's... That's... Is that really... Okay. Sure. That... Honestly, that's not that bad. Um, yeah. Could be better. Ah! I really should do more prep for these. I am just so damn busy, I'm not able to do prep. Anyways, if you are just joining us, um... Ah, make sure you get subscribed, hit that like button, because I struggle like this every week. But this is a way for me to learn, for me to teach you guys at the same time, and for us to have a fun little conversation about making cool stuff and... Uh, if you do hang out on these, sometimes you get to learn about some uh, interesting stuff that is happening inside of the company, like we're building new sets, and uh, we're going to be soon having a uh, two new sets. So it's going to be not Grant sitting on, at his desk anymore, uh, yelling into the camera. So I probably want... It has a very, very light fillet to it. I mean, even that 
might be enough. I'm gonna say it's at least one millimeter. I gotta print out those fillet gauges one of our staff members made. I gotta remember to do that one day. Anyways, uh, that's got a good fillet on there. That kind of gives us the idea of what it looks like. I'm gonna turn back on Sketch 2. I'm gonna go back into Sketch 2 as well because I can actually measure the thickness of this. What am I doing, Grant? Measure the freaking thing that goes into it that is not drafted. The Osmo Pocket is 28.66 by at its widest. 22.83. All right, let me make another center rectangle on that and uh, let's see where that brings us. Nope, didn't click the center. So rectangle, center rectangle. Let me grab from the center there. Our width is, it's a consistent width on this thing. So just measure it with your calipers. 28.6 will go to, I don't know. Nah, 28.6 is fine. 28.65 by, and so if we look at its profile, it does have a bow, so we want to find it where it's reasonably at its thickest. Measure it there, and that is 22.85. This should give us a reasonable idea of how they drafted everything in, um, and how they built it, so... Huh. That does not help me one bit. I know for a fact that these are gone in it, and they're just turned into big fillets, so... Let's do something. When we did this loft, I'm gonna make it a new body, because that's gonna be important. I can turn off the loft. I need to create a sketch there. Or actually, no I don't. I don't need to create the sketch. We can come to here. We have the loft on, and we are going to extrude. Sides aren't flat. Okay, we're gonna extrude this and this. We're gonna do an offset again. Uh, I believe that's 8.5 is what it was. And we're gonna extrude up like 200, j just to go through everything. I want my offset to be like 8.5. Apparently my offset should have been eight. No. Dang. What is it? What is the distance between here and here? 8.3. Alright, we'll redo it. Oh, this one's not going how I planned, but that's how they go sometimes. So we'll do an offset of 8.3 and a distance of, I'm just going to do 50 so it's not that crazy. I think that should cover it. Now, I'm gonna be on the safe side. I'm also going to add some of these outside ones in so it cleans up that outside edge. Nope, yeah. So that way it cleans up that outside edge for us because um, there is a little bit of overhang. So we have that. Boy, that's some weird intersections, but that is honestly exactly how it looks and they just filleted the crap out of this. So I have a fillet here and a fillet here that appears to be a reasonably smooth fillet. So, right, we now need to combine these two. So we can do modify, combine, this, and sure, we're going to join them. Now we can do our fillets. And the reason I knew they weren't joined is the arrows were, was going in the wrong way. I'm like, oh, that arrow's not going in the right direction. So I knew to go ahead and fill it together. Ooh. You don't like that. And that is because of that fillet. So I'm gonna come in here. This fillet is making everything else mad. So I'm gonna suppress it right now. Huh. I've got a better idea. Let me roll back. I'm gonna roll back to here because I need to do a new sketch I need to do it here because I want it to loft only a part of the circle 
And I think that's my issue right now is I'm lofting, I'm lofting too much. So I'm gonna turn off this body so it's out of my way. I'm gonna turn off sketch two so it's out of my way. So I wanna project this, that, that, this, and that. I think that's all I need to project. We're gonna turn the body back on. Now we do the loft. I'm going to redo this first profile. And I'm gonna say that I want it to loft here, here, and here into that. And I think, theoretically, that's gonna get me what I'm looking for. Yeah, I think that's gonna do it. <laughs> but Grant, you yelling into the camera is what brought some of us here. You're right! I can yell into the camera as much as you want! But it's gonna wake up the cat and bother her, so... We're gonna start with just trying to do this this way. This is not, honestly, this is not going how I planned it to, so I apologize. We're gonna join it this time because I don't think the rest of that stuff actually matters at this point. Um, I'm gonna add a fillet here and here to give me the fillet style that they use. This is why DJI products are so damn expensive. It's because they put so much friggin' effort into these stupid little things. Yes, I'm mildly salty about it, but I just, it just bothers me. And it also tapers, but... Okay, and they use, okay, I see what they're doing, I see what they're doing, I see what they're doing, I see what they're doing! Oh, you all are, you all are bastards. Oh, man, okay, now they're coming in and they're doing these fillets. Okay, this is how they did it, this is how they did it. Okay. All right, we're gonna do like a, I think a two millimeter. No, that fillet is done before this. All right, I'm gonna fill up this, then we're gonna do that, uh, that other fillet, uh, two? Uh, two might, be, two, two might be, not be enough. Let's go to one. Well, AE, hopefully me not yelling into the camera is not going to cause you guys to unsubscribe. Because I do work very hard on these videos. Um, sometimes they just don't turn out the way that you expect. And uh, sometimes you gotta roll with it. And uh, one of the big things in business is knowing how to roll with the punches. I'll be damned. Other than... Other than the fact that this whole thing is drafted and angled, I think that's right. And uh, I think I know how to fix this. This draft, since it is equal, so this draft, and there's a draft angle across the whole thing, it appears to be the same all the way around from what I can tell. It's not, that's basically flat. It drafts kind of in the middle. Man, this part is tough to design. Yeah. See, it comes up. Huh. You just sent me an email that may help. Well, let's find out. I gotta do it, of course, my email's normally on this screen, so I gotta do it on my other screen. Oh, man. DJI base. Allison sent me a Thingiverse file. <laughs> Somebody already designed it. I don't give a damn. I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> um, I'm gonna grab it though so you guys can see it. I think it might be kind of interesting for you to see it. So let me save this. Um, and I'm gonna upload the STL file. 
And what we'll do is we'll actually put it into here, and I'm going to show you why you can't edit STL files. I haven't scared you off yet, even with my non-rants. That's good, because I know you just bought a 3D printer, so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you haven't been scared off, but... Yeah, it, this is not one of those things that I ever expected to be doing a YouTube channel like this because, yeah, I, I've said it before, I never expected, um, never expected this to take off the way that it did. Why is this so freaking, oh, this is done in, um, I need to scale it. It's, it's, uh, done in inches. Uh... You know, I'm pretty sure that I went to do this and I just didn't. So I'm going to... Uh, first, I'm going to break the link. Because for us to do any designs, design changes, we need to break the link. Now we're going to scale it. Um, should be under modify scale. Entities is this, 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 this. Well, it's not going to let me do that. So... Anyways, this is too damn big. What we can see, did they? So they brought it in sideways and they left you an opening for uh, the USB-C port. That's not the way I was going to do it, but I don't hate it. And I'm kind of mad at myself for not doing the research because I could have saved myself all of this work and just designed something else. So... In the comments, if you're watching this, let me know if you just want me to scrap this and do something else, because I am totally down for doing that. I think I know how to get rid of the... Uh, to deal with this draft. I think it's another loft, and it's going to require me to have both of those open. So let's create a loft and see what happens. We're going to come from this bottom side here. Okay. Probably could have just unclicked that. Alright. That's profile one. Profile two is going to be this exterior. If I'm right, I want it to intersect. Objects to cut, body two. Oh no, I, I, Alice is asking, it's totally up to me, but would I be frustrated if I didn't finish what I started? Honestly, I can walk away from this right now. I am so frustrated. I try not to show my frustration on stream, because it's just not good for the brand. Uh, but this is really, really pissing me off. I didn't... I didn't expect that it was going to be non-uniformly drafted. But it clearly is. Because this is basically dead flat. And this is not. Now, I could just ignore it. Which part of me says to just freaking ignore it. Your part is still going to hold it in. And we can do what they did and hold it in on these sides. Which is what I'm going to do. This person, whoever designed this, like whoever, whoever designed that Thingiverse thing made the right decision. Holding it on this side here, on all of this, is like way easier. Because all you have to do is just, it's just get it, it's a slide plate, right? It just needs to slide in. Alright. Oh, I feel like an idiot for not thinking of this. We're going to do a slide plate mount. Um, this body, gone. Like, literally keeping it's going to bother me, so I'm going to kill it. Okay, we're going to turn off the that sketch. Let's see. We want to do... See, this is what CAD's all about, right? It's about being able to look at it and say, what is really the best way to do it? My way is I was going to captively hold it and then have my USB-C port really easy to access. This time, I'm going to do similar to what these guys did. And just have an opening for it to come out from. By the way, this is why STL is called standard tessellation. These are all tessellations. It's just a bunch of triangles. And if it's not a, uh, a CAD model, you're not able to edit this, right? I can try to come into here and uh, 
try to edit it on a node basis. I could try to create components from bodies. It's just not gonna work because it's gonna get mad. I can try to edit the mesh. I don't know how to edit meshes. That's beyond my scope of Fusion 360. So we're gonna get rid of it. And we're gonna know that they provide us with some useful information that I can take and use for my own. Because we can. What is going on? All right, whatever. All right, so let's go ahead and remake the base. So the base, no, what? Grant, don't get rid of that. That base was still good. Getting rid of it would get rid of all of that threading that you did. So we're gonna take body two and we're actually gonna move it. And all we're going to do is we're gonna rotate it. Um, we would like to try to move it from a better location than that. That was not what I wanted to do. There. All right, I'm gonna rotate this thing 90 degrees because we're gonna create something that kind of slides in and grabs. It's, damn it. Go back for all of this crap. I don't even need that thing in here anymore. Uh, all right, I do the move again. Move command. Gonna do it right from the top. Grant didn't hit uh, capture position. There we go. All right, so now we can look at creating something. Where's this extrude? This extrude's right here. Or we only gotta come up like Probably 12 is all that we need to come up. Yeah, 12 is good. All right, so we're gonna create a sketch. We're gonna create it. Actually, I think we already have a sketch there. Yeah, sketch four is already there. All right. So we can turn off body two. Keep sketch four on, because that's where everything is. And viably, we know that that space is clean. So, we can come in, get rid of body too, we can hit the extrude key, we can literally click up to there, that should be fine. I'm gonna fix that, don't worry. Uh, yeah, that honestly is actually gonna hold it in just fine. <laughs> wow, alright, hey, whatever. Uh, now we're gonna come to here, we're gonna bring this up like, uh, no, more than that. Probably just one. One millimeter, and we are going to fill it the ever-loving hell out of this thing. So that it is just like a little, a little bump. Just a little bump. Which reminds me of a buddy of mine whose name is, well, he goes, he goes by Bump. His real name's not Bump. His name is Josh. Oh, you're not going to let me do that, are you? All right, how much can we get out of this before it starts to get mad at me? All right. So there, once it slides in, that's going to lock it in place. We've got the arms and wings there that are going to hold it. My phone is ringing. Ah, oh, damn it. Uh, hold on. It's going to ring unless I answer the phone. Ah, whatever. It can ring. Too bad. You're going to hear you're going to hear the company phone ring cuz it's a Google Voice number. Oh well. Don't care. Nothing I can do about it. We're going to come back to sketch one because I can see something that we can actually fix, which is dealing with this. Should be extended all the way out. We're going to mirror that over the mirror line. Okay. And uh, when we did this, that extrude, which is, nope. That extrude is right here. Oh, okay, I see what's going on. Okay, that's fine. We'll do another extrude here and here. Get this the hell out of my shop. All right, now we're gonna fill up the crap out of it. And honestly, this should be all that we need to do it. And see, uh, it, it bothers me because I feel like I just wasted a bunch of people's time. <laughs> But it's only because I'm frustrated. Oh, all right, I'll tell the story of Josh. Um, no, Josh was ran over by a car. And uh, they backed over him 
because when they realized they hit someone, they backed over him to make sure that he was dead. He wasn't dead, and uh, that's how he got the name Bump. There you go. It's Josh's story. Josh is an artist. Um, old friend of mine. Good guy. Really good guy. Great artist, too. Uh, highly recommended. I'm going to do some more fillets here, just because it's going to bother me if I don't. Uh, let's do a 2 millimeter fillet. That's fine. Theoretically. Theoretically. That should work. He says with no confidence whatsoever, that should work. <laughs> oh man, um, this should allow us to kind of push it in and let it slide drop down. Uh, I can't fill it any of that. I can fill it this, but I don't think it's gonna matter. I'm gonna fill it this entire top edge. That might be a little bit much. Uh, I'll just fill it all of these. Cause I want it. I want it to feel good. I want it to feel good, man. See, it's the thing, right? This is part of product development. Is you go in with a preconceived notion of what this is going to look like, and when you design it out, it ends up being literally not the thing you were planning on making. But you know what? It still solves that painful problem that you had. And quite frankly, it's way easier than your initial method of doing it. So if anything, this teaches you that don't accept your initial thought as being gospel because you're probably wrong. Um, guess and, you know, guess and check, trust but verify, and all those good things that keep me from not being a garbage human. <laughs> if we things we don't want it's people being garbage humans i want people to all be kind to each other uh, as joel says love each other more because it is very true we should we man we hate our fellow human way more than we should but i am not getting into a diatribe about that today i'm gonna fill it at all because I, fillets make me happy and that's what i'm gonna do because i want to do it because i'm a big boy this is valuable though Little tiny part, if we look at the, you know what, I'm going to actually just bring that part into Prusa Slicer, and I'm going to compare it to mine directly. Uh, so let's take a look, what else can I do? I'm going to chamfer this bottom edge a little bit. That's probably all that I can do. Every time I click my mouth, the cat looks at me. Alright, I think that's good. Who the hell knows? We're going with it, so whatever. Gonna go ahead and save it, get it saved. We get uh, one open, beautiful. We're gonna go to all the stock Prusa profiles because it is not my job to show you what our secret sauce is. It is my job to make cool stuff on the internet. And I guess have a little bit of fun doing it, right? Generic PETG. This is absolutely um, a, uh, a PETG print all day long. I'm gonna bring the two parts in, which are these two. Oh God, that would suck. Oh, I didn't add uh, my USB-C port. Let me go add that in. How do I do that, though? Because that's going to slide in sideways. I guess I just cut that one side off short. Would that work? Hmm. Yeah, I got to add my USB-C port. Totally forgot to do that. Which, um, I'm going to put the Osmo in here. And let's see... It's so, the USB-C port's on the back, so if I want the Osmo, it'll slide in. I'd rather it slide in like that than like that. Yep, that just feels better to me, so I'm going to edit this side and enable that USB-C port. The USB-C port is right in the middle, so we are going to create a sketch here. And honestly, that sketch should get moved all the way to here where the part hasn't been filleted yet because the 
Fillets just add a bunch of complication that if you don't have to deal with it, you don't want to deal with it. It looks like the found part has both threads for direct mounting and bezels for sliding into a locking plate. It does, yes. Actually, there are, there are not threads in that. Not that I can see. There are not threads, but I'm, I'm guessing they made it the right one where you can just cut your own threads. This is going to suck because that's all overhangs. Like, I would cut it and then I would bond it. So I have less overhangs. Overhangs are a pain in the ass to begin with. And we got to find ways to get rid of them. The other thing that I noticed is this is round. This is only unless they... Yeah, no, they truncated the circle. This is not going to fit in there. I don't think. I mean, apparently it does. It says, This holder for your DJI Osmo Pocket in combination with the wireless module so that you can use it on a tripod with a quarter-inch mount or a QB32 quick-release plate. Yeah, I like my way better because I can, right? We like to do things our way. We're going to take a quick break to pet the cat because I'm a little frustrated. And when I get a little frustrated, this one is always here to at least nibble on my fingers. Are we going to... Are we going to have... Are we going to bite me? Yeah, we're going to try to bite me. That's okay. You're still a good kitty and I love you. Rawr! Rawr! Like the video for messing with cats on a live stream because we can do that. And this is the kind of channel that we are. Hell yeah! Woo! You almost, you almost went nuclear there. I gotcha. I gotcha. And she's learned to really not mess with her claws too much. She, she is not declawed. Every now and then she'll get me, but normally she keeps her claws in. This is a game for her. So no, I'm not abusing my cat. We're just having, we're just having fun. Rawr! 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 Okay, that's enough. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it made it into the video, but on one of the previous videos, she bit me while I was recording, and it actually broke skin. She almost never breaks skin, um, but sometimes she forgets, and sometimes it hurts me, and I wince back. So, yep, there she goes, off to do important cat things once again. Or no, what are you doing? Huh? Hey, come here. In your bed. I need, I, Daddy needs to work. Come on. Hey, come here, in your bed. Cats. All right, whatever, let's just do it. I'm just making sure I'm not bleeding. Nah, not bleeding, just hurts a little bit. Hey, I can't pick you up, so you gotta decide what you're doing. All right, whatever. We're gonna get you out of the way. We're gonna go back to Fusion 360. We're gonna go back to little Grant. We got Victoria sitting here with me, so. All right, I'm gonna measure you don't just have to measure the USB-C port. You really have to take a measurement of cat. I love you, but I am busy. Cat. All right, I can technically pick you up. Come here. Rawr. Oh, you lost weight. You have lost weight, Missy. I am so proud of you. Stay there. No, no. All right. Well, we're gonna we're gonna play this game again. Which is cat walks across my keyboard as I'm trying to work. Hey, get your butt off my keyboard. Thank you. All right, so let's just get into it. Uh, we got to add a USB-C port. The USB-C port on these bases is not in the middle as you would expect. I'm going to try to get that on the camera there. It is... That's that, you know, that 8.3 tall, but it is how far from the top edge? It is 1.34 millimeters from the top so it'll be from there so I want to make sure that I can project this line I can project actually I'll project that whole thing project all of that all right so it is uh, 1.34 millimeters down so I'm gonna create a, uh, a rectangle because USB-C is a pretty big connector I've got a USB-C cable next to me here that I'm going to measure. Do I have one that I can just grab out of them? Cool, I do. All right. USB-C connector. And I'm just going to measure this, and I'm going to make the hole big enough to fit this and more. So this is 6.5 by 
12 and a half. So let's go ahead and dimension this out to 6.5 by 12 and one half inches. D, so this should be 12. And this should be 6.5. And we need this to be about, probably 1.25 inches from the top there. Um, and we now need to take this and move it over because it is based dead center, just like that. So let's make sure that we draw our construction line from that origin point up. Let's get rid of the construction. We want to grab a, not text grant, we want to grab a point. We're going to find our midpoint, which is oddly really close. We're going to make it coincident. And there we go. That should be enough for the USB port. However, I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger. We're going to go up to seven. Right. It needed to be that distance away. And I'm going to make this 1.1. 1 .1. Um, I want to have a little bit of space on the bottom there. And 12.5, I'm going to go out to probably 13. That should give me enough space. We're gonna finish that sketch. Now we're gonna hit extrude. We're going to extrude this all the way through, which was not, it did exactly what I did not want it to do. Dang. Hmm. So I could bring it over a little bit more, but it might make it a very tight fit. I've got a little wall there, which should be enough. Um, what I'm gonna do is, let's just adjust this. This connector is a pretty big connector. Let me check one of my other connectors. 6.2. This one is... 6.1. Honestly, I can probably get away with like 6.75. And I just need it to catch on the bottom, right? If it catches on the bottom, we should be okay. The top up here just keeps it from falling out. Um, but really, a lot of that force is held by this bottom piece. So let's finish that sketch. It's going to give us a little bit more. This is okay. Of course, we're, we, we were going to need support in this thing anyways. So I guess I'm not too concerned. And I guess... Now that Victoria's off to do more important things, we'll bring the stunt double back. Okay. That should cover it. This is a little bit of a weak spot. Um, and I'm a little concerned that, that it might not hold it. So I'm thinking that I want to delete that. No, I don't want to do that. Looks better with it on. Alright, we can do that. And theoretically, I could do this on both sides. That way it can lock in kind of either way but I'm not going to do that we're gonna do it this way I'm gonna save it and we're going to take it back into um, the software so that's v2 technically this is v3 it just didn't update we're gonna take a look at Prusa slicer not that grant gonna grab the v3 base we're gonna make sure that we just Arrange everything. Yeah, it's not it's not not my greatest design. But I'll tell you, it's way cleaner than the other one, so I'm gonna call mine a win. Uh let's look at how we would print this. So we're going to do uh supports for support enforcers only. Go ahead and adjust all that, that's fine. And that's because I'm going to paint on the supports. And I don't think I've shown this before. Paint on supports for Prusa Slicer. But it's pretty great. Uh, you make the size of whatever you want your paintbrush to be. And you can literally just paint on where you want support material to go. And I'm doing this because I don't want support material in there. Right? So it's only going to be for support enforcers. We'll do the same thing here. Only for support enforcers. Because I designed this part so I can cheat. This part, this one's going to have a constraint. So we're going to come over here. 
We're going to grab, uh, where's my settings for support material? There we go. Gonna also auto-generate those supports. Yeah, should be fine. If you don't, if you don't cat at 90 degrees, but use a 45 degree wing, you can skip the support. Correct. Um, the reason that I don't think that we can skip that support, Nadav, is the part. I'm going to go to Big Grant to show you. This is a little teeny tiny part. And if I had a uh, a chamfer to give me that, that thing, it, this would have to be so much taller to take account for the fact that it just goes up and then just goes right over on top. So is what it friggin is homies we gotta work with what we got and that's what we're gonna do um now if we look at this look at all that support god support's terrible there you go i forgot the stock profile is used like really terrible settings for infill it uses a uh, grid really the best infill is gyroid <laughs> This is not a, it doesn't have to be a strong part, um, so that'll work. Three perimeters, so it'll be, have a little bit of strength to it. Three bottoms are fine. Oh, damn it, we're on big grant still. That's fine, I was just messing with support settings. It's fine. Honestly, missing that didn't hurt you at all. Thanks, Allison. Alright, so we, we still can do our threads. Look at that, that's all supported and just, I don't like it. I don't like it. This, this to me is kind of the right answer. This is going to be a tough print, um, but I'm going to get one rolling here, and uh, if it does work, it'll be the time lapse for tomorrow. If it doesn't work, I'm going to have to print something else for the time lapse tomorrow. But yeah, look at all that gar. Do you want to take all the support out of that? Because I sure as hell don't. And we all know, like that is bridgeable all day long. So yeah, I think this will be fine. We're gonna try it out. Um, yeah, the other thing that we were supposed to do today was to uh, to build handles for cardstock collectors uh, tools. So cardstock collector, and we'll probably do this next week if I can get some measurements from them. Um, but they've got a bad back like i have they've got arthritis they can't bend the way they used to when they were weeding so they need tools that they can use while they're sitting down on a low stool but it needs to be long because like they make little tiny garden trowels right but you gotta bend down and that sucks so they need the handle to be like two and a half to three feet long so my first thought was get a freaking hacksaw and do for it nadav says kira and tree support God, I hate tree support, and I'm not going to do it. I know that some people love it. I've never had success with it. It is, maybe it's one of those big brain support things. To me, regular support is totally fine, and it gets the job done. But Cardstock Collector um, is trying to get a tool that's the right size. I said just cut it down with a hacksaw, but it's not going to have that ergonomic handle. So the plan was to actually make some ergonomic handles, and like, I had garden tools in my home so that I could get measurements from them. So, and Nadav says tree supports are so good. They are, and we're going to talk about them in the Cura Slicer video coming soon. Get subscribed so you don't miss it. Um, but they are very tough. And if you don't have a really well-tuned printer, tree supports can cause you a lot of problems. That's why I know that these original supports that Prusa Slicer does are very, very wasteful. But like, I mean, come on, that's not that, that's not wasting all that much. Um, I don't even have the newest version of Kira that can do tree supports. But that, I'll tell you, give you guys some, some insight. That video, I've got uh, Simplify 3Ds already filmed. I'm going to film Prusa Slicer after this. Uh, but I'm basically doing fresh installs of everything so that we can film these videos. Because I don't want like my preconceived notions of how things work to be a problem. Prusa Slicer, I'm probably going to fudge it so I don't lose all of my, uh, all of my, uh, settings, but that's okay. That's what movie magic is for. That's why we have editors. 
But uh, I've never worked with Kirimoto. I've never worked with Idea Maker. I worked with Kira every now and then. I might do one on like Repetier Host, Matter Control, and Select 3R. Uh, but there'll be one video altogether. They won't be individual videos on their own. Because like Slick 3R hasn't been touched in three years. Uh, but yeah, there you go. There's the part. I am not... Let's... So let's back up and talk about it. I'm not pleased. And I'm not pleased because I couldn't do what I was expecting that I could do, right? I had my expectations for myself set too high. And I think that's one of the best lessons from this is know what you're capable of doing and know what you're capable of designing. Because you may not be capable of designing the things that you want. And that's where companies like 3D Musketeers come in handy. Because I am not normally one of the designers that makes parts. Those are our staff. Right? That's Justin. That's Alan. That's uh, Brad. That's uh, Tad. I'm forgetting people. But there are people there. Um, Josephine, which you all haven't met yet. Hoping to get you all to meet her someday soon. Um, she is one of our newer editors on both video and CAD. So, normally Justin is around yelling at me, but he is not around today, and that is okay. Oh, speaking of someone to yell at me, I've got Victoria back. She ran into the room, jumped up on my lap, and thankfully did not give me hypodermic needles in my legs of her sharp, sharp talons. Anyways, I guess for me this one was I came into it thinking that I could do something that I couldn't. That's okay. I found a good way around it, and that is because of you guys, the subscribers specifically. Allison, thank you for getting me this uh, idea, because that showed me a better way to do it that made more sense. Now, mine is an easier print, but we will see who stands up better. I dig it. I think this ended up going okay. I was really uh, risking just saying F it and be done with this, but hey... I'm glad I stuck it out. I'm glad you guys stuck it out with me as well. Uh, so, yeah. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this one. Uh, keep making awesome. Have fun. Call your loved ones, because you should do that more often. And yes, Nadav, no DevOps. We have no need for DevOps. I know, we've talked about this. I have no need for DevOps. I'm sorry. CAD designers, yes. I need more of you. Video editors, yes. We need more video editors. So if you are watching and you have those skills, hit me up, YouTube at 3dmusketeers.com. And if you want one of your ideas made live, can't guarantee it's going to go perfect the first time, but damn it, I'm going to try. Make sure you email us your ideas or comment them on these videos. That's what they're here for. It's here so we can all hang out, have fun, and make cool stuff. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Absolutely, Allison. It is my pleasure to persevere for you guys. It, it does get very frustrating when you're doing it live and you don't know how to do things. So, yeah, it sucks. But you know what? We got through it. And that's really what matters in the end. And I'm glad you all hung out with us. I'm glad we had some fun. And I will see you all in the next one. Stay safe out there.